I believe in God. God is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. What is this place? I have no memory of it. I feel guilty. I did something horrible, but I can't remember what it is. I can't remember my life at all. I need help, and I must seek forgiveness. I can't. It's stuck. Someone's holding it from the inside. May I come in? All I seek is help and forgiveness. That voice. I recognize it. It won't budge. Father, can you let me in? I, I know it's you. Here on the doorstep of the Blessed House, I'm asking you, I'm begging. You have not set your mind on the things of God, but on the things of men. I know I did something horrible, I can feel it, but everything's so obscured, I have no memory of my deeds. I beg you, have mercy, let me pass. I need his help and absolution. Something's appearing on the stones. It reads, Yosef Donani, 1935 to 199, the year of his death is missing. I can't remember what happened to you. Father, can you... Your mind was infected by your corrupted soul. Shame on you, unrighteous creature. I can't remember anything from the past. A long time ago, you've made a fateful decision to abandon God. There shall be no grace for you. I never abandoned God. Let me pass. Let me understand what... Enough! No words will ever open that door again for you. My mind may be roaming in the shadows, but my soul is still pure. Let me talk to him. You don't have a soul anymore, son. Look inside. What do you see? Guilt and sorrow. If you had stayed true to the faith, nothing sinful would have ever happened. I've never abandoned faith. The true faith... What is true faith? I know you taught me what it is, but I can't remember. It's a pity to what you've been reduced to, Benedek. A corrupted soul is like a bottomless black pit. It nourishes a false faith. You have been eternally banished from his house. But forgiveness is what he can give, even in the darkest of places. Accept your burden! I accept your Bible, Father. It is my burden now. Now walk to the other side of the valley until you reach the place of torment and sorrow. That is my punishment, to dwell eternally in such a place. You've already been punished. For your sins you have been cursed. Who cursed me? God did this to me? Deeds cannot be undone but can be forgiven. If you truly repent and want to be absolved in his eye, 
You must go and save your bloodline's last soul. I don't understand. I'm the last of my bloodline. Everyone else is dead. Fallacy! Now leave. Act before the time has passed. Wait, I'm begging you! What are my sins? Father? Father! Answer me! Into your hands I commend my fate like I always did. I don't know who I am looking for, but I need to act quickly and find that poor soul before it's too late. For both of us. The path to redemption. Or hell. This is the place? Not a single soul is alive here. I may be late. The scent so close to this strange altar is unbearable. All of these people scorched beyond recognition. It's impossible to. Hold on. They all have almost identical marks on their flesh. So familiar. I must have seen them before. I know. Seals of pledge, the devil's marks. These people pledged their obedience to the most evil of all. Poor mindless beings. There's something on one of the cadavers' neck. A necklace, it seems. It's a rosary. Still intact. Some initials are carved on the cross. B, D. B and D. I can't recall. I, I'm struggling, but there's something about it that... Who are you? What do you want? In the name of God, answer me or be gone! Show yourself! Victoria... Victoria? She had the rosary. My rosary. Those initials are mine. This is my sister. My bloodline's last soul. Dead. In front of my eyes. You killed my sister, Fee! May God drown you in the lake of fire! Burn eternally amid shrieks and groans of pain and despair! Your fire, your sins... Your bloodline is cursed. The fire. The fire, the screaming, the smell of burned flesh. I remember now. I executed them all, torched them alive in the name of God for acts of heresy. And I killed Victoria, the last of my bloodline, too. But I still can't remember. Nothing before or after this act. Nothing at all. It's like I'm seeing someone else's memory. Save my sister's soul. Punish me. My sins. My sins. My sins. Eternal torment and sorrow is all I want. Uh, for there. Uh, 
For there are sins that lead to hell. My, my eyes, I can't see. I can't see anything at all. My, my eyes are fine. It's, it's just that I don't, oh, I, I don't have my glasses on. That dream, the church from my hometown, the graves of my parents, the crucified cadavers, and God in the form of an eye. Uh, it was the most terrible dream I've ever had. That wasn't me. That's not who I am, God. You know me. I remember everything from my past. I've never sinned. I've never been forbidden to enter a church. I know what true faith is. I'm obedient only to you, God. It's what I want. It's how my father taught me to be. My father, who one day just disappeared from our lives, shattering my mother's will to live. My father, who gave me his Bible the day before he left our family. What? I, I can't find it. It's not in my jacket. Where is it? It must be here somewhere. Something's on the floor. Glasses? Oh. I'm so distressed. How was I supposed to find anything without them? Victoria may have been killed by my hand inside the nightmare, but she did something even more terrible to me outside of it. She dragged me to this town and made me stay in this living tomb of a house that tried to taint me while I was sleeping. No. It didn't try to taint me. It tried to curse me. Yes, to curse my soul. I was told in the nightmare that I was cursed. It must have been my mind which was trying to warn me I was being cursed by the house, or by the town as a whole. I don't know, both, I guess. I'm still in peril here. I should leave at once, but I can't. I can't leave without my Bible, and I can't leave alone. Not without my... My bloodline's last soul by my side. I can't see my Bible in these shadows. I just hope. Victoria must have taken it from me while I was asleep and then placed it somewhere upstairs. There was no other explanation, even though it is strange. She never did that. Who's there? Victoria? Victoria? Where's my Bible? I don't know. Why don't you ask her? Where is she? Under the blanket. Come closer. Wake her up. The bed's empty. Where is she? What do you believe in, Benedict? Where's my sister? I need to see her. She took my Bible away from me. Answer me first. Besides God, what do you believe in? I believe life should be spent in solitude where questions like yours cannot arise. See, I believe life is pointless without a family. We don't exist if we don't belong to someone else except God. Family, Benedict. 
Without a family, life cannot exist. You made that clear enough when you abandoned priesthood to marry my sister. That was a sacrifice I believed had to be made. As of today, I'm not so sure anymore. I'm not following. Family members don't hurt each other. It's wrong. Don't you agree? Victoria hurt you? What did she do this time? You did. You turned her against me. What are you talking about? About the things you suggested to her yesterday on the train. I beg your pardon? I didn't say a word to her, to you, to no one, as a matter of fact. What about calling me an addict? Th that I did say. But what have I done? I didn't turn her against you. She even defended you. Of course she did, when she's the one who gave me the morphine months ago. She did what? She did what family's supposed to do. She helped her husband to alleviate his pain. Now, it's your turn, Benedict. Will you help me? Help you with what? I, I just want to talk to her. I want that too. I want to talk to my wife. So where is she? What's going on? I, I don't want to stay here anymore. You think I'm a degenerate? Have I imagined hearing your voices downstairs? Who? Uh, that was just me. She's not downstairs. How many times I called your names before hearing that horrible scream of yours? I screamed when I woke up from a terrible nightmare. Well, I'm living the nightmare right now. Don't lie to me. I heard you talking after that scream. I talked to God, and I talked to myself, and then I came here to talk to her. Is that true? Because the real problem I have is that the two of you emptied my whole bag while I was asleep. Why? I don't care about all that stuff. Have it. Now that he mentioned his bag, where's mine? I didn't see it downstairs. Just give me my morph... <laughs> my pills back. Make my pain go away. Instead of accusing me, perhaps you should search in that bag of yours again. I did that, and I scoured the whole floor several times already, only to find nothing. Someone took my pills. Maybe it was you. Maybe it was her. You think I'm a thief? Go on, then. Search me. I believe you can be anything you want, as long as it fits your vision of righteousness, Brother Benedict. But you're not stupid. You wouldn't risk being caught while carrying them around. Maybe it's time for me to start questioning my belonging to this family. I'm gonna go downstairs now. You stay here. Why? I already told you she's not there. Don't be anxious. If she is, I'll make her talk and give me my pills back. If she's not, I'll find them by myself. In any case, I'll call you once I'm done. Maybe they had a quarrel and she left before I woke up. I don't trust him. Whatever the truth is, I should take the chance and search for my Bible while he's not around. Remember what I asked you? Have you seen my Bible? I don't understand. You want my help now? <laughs> uh, to be honest, I'm not sure I've seen it. But you should definitely search the floor. People say I don't have a keen eye for details, so I might not have noticed it. Not ideal, but much better. It's a giant tree with dozens of corpses hanging from its branches and skulls that feed its roots. The branches represent visual keychain holders, and there's a key hanging as a corpse on one of them. Oh, 
appalling. A heap of dead. Damned rats! It scurried into the wall. Was he telling me the truth? He did. It's completely empty. Why would Victoria take all of his belongings? It doesn't make any sense. So, obviously, your wife's not here, Nikolai. She must have sneaked out while Benedict was holding you upstairs. And now you're supposed to go after her, right? Perhaps she has your pills. But if you've learned something in your marriage, it's that she always expects you to make the most obvious decision. Just look around the room first. Looks like the owner has an alluring hobby. Eh, these dolls are nothing special. Except for the big ones at the back. Not counting the headless ones, of course. You should definitely take one of them for your private collection. Which one do you choose? Bad choice. The image of the devil. The doll with horns. Fascinating. What do we have here? A small brown bag. And it's not just any bag. It's Benedict's bag. So you have to ask yourself why it was hidden here. What's inside? I can't breathe. It smells so sickening. Just old clothes. And nothing but mold in them. A yellow blanket wrinkled only on one side of the bed, which means that either Victoria or Nikolai didn't sleep here. Victoria! Nikolai, what's happening? I'd better check. That window was right above the front door. Liar said he'd call me. Nikolai, wait! I have to stop him. That's my bag. How did it get on the floor? The inside is all wet, slimy. My rosary is here, and so is my pen. But everything else is gone. Nikolai must have known the whole time where my bag was. Which means he has my... He has my Bible as well. Or it's Victoria who has it. I, I didn't turn her against him. It was Nikolai who turned Victoria against me. Maybe it's all part of a wicked plot against me. All she had to do was drag me to this place and put me on the stage like a puppet. And now they are just pulling the strings. They make me sleep in this house. They take my Bible and hide my bag. She disappears. And now... And now he's doing the same. Nikolai is trying to disappear. Nikolai! I was checking something. Really? On the ground, between the leaves, and behind the house. Stop this madness! Who's there? 
<sighs> Calm down. Why are you doing this to me? Benedict, listen to me. No, I've listened to your lies in the house. Now you should listen to me. All right. I'm all ears. It's clear to me that what the two of you are doing goes way back, months before this damn journey. What are you talking about? Let me explain. Where's my Bible? Again with this question? You must have lost it somewhere. But don't worry, you can probably get a new one in town. I don't want a new one. I want exactly that Bible, because it is mine. It was given to me by my father. And no one else except me is allowed to carry it, or even just touch it. Not my sister, not you, not even Father Imre. I know. Calm down. Victoria told me this a long time ago. How would you describe this town? Would you say it's a hidden gem in the mountains? Well, it is alluring, isn't it? To whom? The gem in the mountains were her words. That's how Victoria tried to convince me to go on this journey with the two of you. And when I refused, what did she do? She went to my superior, Father Imre, and claimed Sveti Kotar is a word of God. She convinced him, so I had to go. But I never believed those words, and God knows I was right to do so. We all saw the truth the moment we arrived in this town. You mean the ritual on the square? I found it fascinating. This journey, this house, the disappearances, it's all part of your wicked plot against me. <sighs> a plot against you? Can you hear yourself? I'm starting to believe Victoria was right to have doubts about your health. So this is what this journey is all about. You want to make me look crazy, put me in a mental institution. You got it all wrong. Calm down. Wrong? You knew the whole time where my bag was. Did Victoria hide my Bible there and then you just grabbed it on your way out? I found something slimy in my bag. Did you drool while stealing my stuff or was it her? Benedict. And where is she? Is she hiding in the woods? Do you know? Of course you do. She must have told you that I cannot leave this town without her. So why is she hiding from me? Because she knows I can't leave without her, and this just prolongs the agony of being in this damned place. And that's exactly what's going on here. You want to torment me as long as you can. So what do you do to be sure I won't leave on my own? You steal my documents from the bag. But you know, before we left, I made her swear on our parents' graves that she would have to take me back to Budapest immediately if I decided so. So no, I'm not crazy. Are the two of you done with me now? Does she need to desecrate our parents' remains? You certainly made a point here. I wouldn't say you're crazy, but you got it all wrong. How about I tell you what really happened? You expect me to believe you after everything that has happened? We were robbed, Benedict. When I woke up, my first thought was that you and Victoria stole all my stuff. Including my morphine. Then I went down and found your bag behind the dolls. Unlike my own, yours wasn't empty. So I was right. Victoria put the Bible inside, and you... No. The only things I found in there are a pen, a rosary, and this. Are those human eyes? You're the one who's crazy here. Thirty pig's eyes inside a pig's bowel. Horrible. I agree, but, uh, that's why your bag was so slimy. This is insane. He's lying. And now that he's come closer, I can notice an unpleasant, musty smell on him. I believe it's what the perpetrator left to mock us. After stealing our stuff, he obviously had a need to leave a mark of his deed. And who's supposedly our perpetrator? The owner of the tavern. Of course. Why would a man who waited a whole day just to give us the keys of the house do such a thing? And why would he take everything but my rosary and a pen? I guess because it's the same man who left a dozen of pig's eyes in your bag. I don't know where he got this bowel, but this story is ridiculous. So how do you explain Victoria's missing bag then? If that man robbed us without taking our bags, where is hers? 
Maybe Victoria took it with her. I noticed that the blanket on your bed is wrinkled only on one side. Confess, Victoria didn't sleep at all last night. She took her time to do everything you plotted together, and then she disappeared. Enough with this crazy idea that this is all about you! I don't know where Victoria is. When I woke up, she wasn't there. The smell on Nikolai, I just realized. It's the same odor of the wardrobe upstairs. These clothes he's wearing are not his. He must have taken them. I'm going to get all of our stuff back. Don't worry. You just stay here and wait for Victoria. What? Wait, no, you shouldn't... Is he going to meet her in town? Or perhaps she's hiding in the woods and waiting for me to leave. What should I do? I have to move. I need my morphine. What do you want? I'm going with you. Think about your sister. If you follow me, once she comes back, she'll find an empty house. We can leave a note. What about your Bible? That's what I've been asking you from the moment you saw me today. Where is it? So, you really don't have it. Hmm. You're not as methodical as I thought you were. For God's sake, no. I really don't have it. Well then, you're saved by the grace of that thief. If he didn't steal my pills, I would have never found your Bible. It's in the cabinet upstairs. And relax. I didn't touch it. I swear. Why didn't you tell me until now? I thought you found it after I went downstairs. It's all right. Just go take it, and then we can leave together. You should have said something. If that is the truth, if it's really there, you desecrated it by leaving it among those carcasses. That pile is the only place I didn't search. I have to be sure he's not lying this time. Benedict! Don't make me wait too long! I've heard this dreaded sound too many times in my life. Frogs and frogs and more. I didn't touch them before. How did they fall out? There's something buried beneath. It looks like it, it must be. My Bible. This would never have happened if... Decided to come in? Is that you, Victoria? For God's sake, answer me! I must get out of here before it's too late. What do you want? I don't know if that was Nikolai. It's so dark in there. Trying again to disappear? I cannot stay in this house. I have to go into town and try to find Victoria. Maybe that was her. Maybe it was Nikolai. Or maybe it was a stranger. God, I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but I have to leave. And so I descended into the valley of the shadow of death, oblivious of what this decision meant. Meanwhile, Nikolai was already walking there. Huh. She was right. 
This town really is a hidden gem. One that should have been buried so deeply as to never been found. Well, we're here now. So let's hear what our perpetrator has to say. Daver. Hey, Nicolay. Welcome to my tavern. A nice place you have here. Congratulations. <laughs> Told you. You should have come in last night. I'm curious. Do you consider yourself a taxidermist? A what? Taxidermist. A person who preserves dead animals for the purpose of being put on display. Oh, no. It's because of that head over there. No, no, no. That's just an exception. I loved that pig. So that one had the privilege of a quick death. He died of natural causes. Why? Do you remember telling me last night about your procedure? You vividly described the sounds, the scents, the images. Now that you mention... I recall saying something, but it's what I do. Gotta feed the guests. Fair enough. And how do you feed yourself? With love from people of this friendly community. What do you think? No nightly hunting activities? <laughs> oh, be our guest. Wait for the night, and then go into the woods. Hear the silence, and hunt. The nothingness. But you were taking a nap when I arrived, and you looked tired. Suppose you didn't get much sleep last night. Wrong presumption, my friend. I went to bed the moment you left. You know, the wine we had and all. Why are you asking all these strange questions? I'm just worried about you. Let me show you something. I think you'll find it interesting. So? What do you have to show me? Here it is. What's that? I'm the one who should be confused here. Why the number 30? Does it have a special meaning? Those eyes are the only proof I have. You see, someone took everything we had and left 30 pig's eyes in one of our bags. Unbelievable! How did this happen? The coward who did that took advantage of the night. You don't say. And he knew we were heavily dazed by the wine you gave us. Must have watched us the whole time on the square. But your wife didn't drink at all. She said it tasted like human blood. She didn't see him? I wasn't aware that she didn't drink the wine. Maybe she saw him. I don't know yet. Do you have any idea who our guy might be? Oh, I don't. No, people around here are hungry, weak, misguided. It could be anyone, <laughs> even the priest. Especially the priest. I think it could be someone who collects pig's eyes. You think? The procedure you described last night. I can't get it out of my head. Which part exactly? All of it. The agonizing shrieks, the scent of liquids, the... the images of piles of gouged eyes. How can you enjoy that? What can I say? The more they suffer, the better the food. <laughs> Is that the reason? Why are you worried about me? No, not really. What worries me is the peculiar coincidence that both the perpetrator and you knew about our impaired condition and the house we were staying. 
And you both have a very particular fixation for pig's eyes. What are the odds? Do you think he could return? Do something terrible to us this time? Definitely. He surely must be aware that I and my brother-in-law are in the service of God. So? <laughs> Not everyone's part of the herd. Or are you saying that because you believe, God will help you? <laughs> no, but you can. You should leave now. Can you help me find my morphine? We can do just fine without the rest of our stuff. If you value your lives, leave. If not, stay. Take your chances. You know, like our prophet always says... This town's hanging loosely on the edge of hell. Moise, there you are. <laughs> Thought you were still crawling your way up from the grave. Your friend here interrupted that. Oh, yeah. He surely said a lot of disturbing things. He even thought I'm a taxidermist because of your crippled state. <laughs> that is not the truth. God has taken away many things. But hearing is not one of them. You mind if I take over? I can help him. Sure. If you say so. <laughs> So, how can you help me? You first. I don't understand. First me what? What's so special about that morphine of yours? Don't you know already? Aren't you a prophet? I am. But I want to hear it from you. See if you deserve my help. I... I have these headaches. It's like storms. See, that's a lie. I'm having one from the moment I woke up. It's unbearable. It's frightening. But I keep it to myself. Still not the truth. But what I really asked is, why do you want exactly those pills? I'm not a local. Where would I find morphine in this, like you call it, place at the edge of hell. Nikolai, what's so special about them? I want to know that. My wife gave them to me. Ah, finally some truth. And the pouch where they were placed in. I need both back. What if she's the perpetrator? You said it yourself. You didn't know that she didn't drink the wine. Maybe you don't know. No, that's not possible she wouldn't are you going to help me or not like i said you first i already told you what you wanted to know that was nothing first you help me and then i'll help you is this leading somewhere it is this is me leading you to your wife. She didn't do it. It must have been someone else. Have an idea who he is? It shouldn't be hard to guess. Let's say I might use the elimination method to get to it. What do you want? The truth about October 28. That was yesterday. Is this about my wife? Again? No. It's about what this town did and is still doing. What did you see last night on the square? People prayed together, chanted, rang their bells, and then set the effigy on fire. They call it a celebration of life. I say it's a centuries-old celebration of lies. Go out and find out all you can about October 28th.
You want me to ask people what they know? Why, if all they know are lies? Correct. You'll show me that lie, and then I'll tell you the truth. And only then I'll tell you what really happened last night. I'll do it. Don't you move. It won't take me long. Remember, the truth is always painful. Sometimes even horrible. Hello, lady. Oh, uh, hello there. Please, uh, feel free to have a look around. And if you need anything, just ask. Excuse me? Yes? Could you turn that off? I need to talk to you. Uh, sure. Uh, just a moment. What can you tell me about October 28th? Wait a minute. I know you. Y you were here last night. Y you dragged your sister away from me. I didn't drag my wife away. I gently asked her to join our company. Oh, it, it didn't look that way. I don't want to sound rude, but can we please go back to my question? Sure. How can I help? Tell me about October 28. Oh, it, it's a graceful and dreadful day for the town. Certainly the most important one. The story goes way back to the Middle Ages. A time when the fate of Sauber was in the hands of a single man. Eventually, only centuries later, that man became the patron saint of this beautiful little gem. Kotar. That's correct. Even Kotar, the priest of the town back in the days. You mentioned the Middle Ages and a strange name. What was it again? Sorry, but... Something's bothering me. You said you didn't drag your wife away. I said that. But I remember you pulling her violently to the side, and then making her drink wine from that lurid bottle. I pulled her gently toward me. But it didn't look that way. I'm sorry for sticking my nose in your matters. You probably had every right to do that. Maybe I got it all wrong. But she looks so easy to scare. Weak and vulnerable. Like... like a butterfly. She also tends to fly away from me when around people. It's not polite at all. Now, I asked you about that strange name. Yes, Sober. The old name of the town. Ancient. Some stories tell it predates even Christianity itself. How's Sabor related to October 28? That name was forbidden, and it still is. Forbidden by the same entity which, ironically enough, never recognized the new name. Oh, it's a long story. Tell me about the entity that forbid the name. Let me just... You know, I, I apologize, but my, my thoughts wandered back again. Where's Victoria now? I don't know! Could you stop asking me stupid questions and just tell me what I need to know? Can you do that? What's wrong with you people? How should I know where she is? I'm sorry. She's not with you, and I thought... Just stop wandering anywhere with your thoughts. And 
Be so kind to turn that thing dead this time. It's driving me crazy. I, I thought it would make you feel positive, like it makes me. I may have overreacted. Don't mind me. It was a stressful night. I, I've warned Victoria about that house. I suppose you couldn't get any sleep. The opposite. I was trapped inside a dream. Please, you were about to tell me. October 28th is the day when Ivan Kotar died. Don't you celebrate life on that day? The town glorifies the ending moment of Kotar's long sacrifice for our ancestors, and thus life for us all. You sure there's truth in that? Seems like a strange ritual. Personally, I'm not sure. I don't believe everything they say, except for the way Kotar died. You've got my attention. How did he die? Uh, apologies, I, I don't know how this happened. It's turned off. He was beheaded by the Vatican's emissaries. Why? I guess that's what they did back then to heretics. I don't know. I'm, I'm not the right person to talk to about the past. If you're not the right person, then I won't take any more of your time. Thank you. You've been more than helpful. And, lady. Y yes Why don't you turn that radio back on? Shouldn't have listened to me in the first place. It's all right. I've learned about October 28. It's what you had to do. What do you want now? Have patience. I've almost reached the light. He must have left moments after I went into the house. And yes, he left. He lied again. But this... This rules him out. Someone else was inside the house. I'm not going back. Not before I'm convinced that was Victoria who disappeared into the woods. Maybe I should talk to the shopkeeper and ask if she saw her. Souvenirnitsa Lavanyak. It's a souvenir shop. Madam? Oh, hello there. Uh, please, take a... Do I know you? I apologize. Madam? Oh, it's you. You know... I'm still asking myself who you are. We've never met before. I feel like we did. You remember me. My name's Ida. No, madam, I've never been in this town before. <coughs> you all right? How should I ask about Victoria? Where is everyone? Everyone who? This square was brimming last night. Where's everyone today? Uh, sorry. 
You, you got me confused. I'm still convinced I've seen you before. But if I did, then... You know, that is a strange question you're asking, because in this town, everyone knows where everyone else is. And where would that be? In the church, or behind their own walls and windows. <laughs> you really are a stranger. Incredible. But at least you're here now. It's the outsiders that never visit us who are at a loss. Did you see the big fire last night? Oh, that's what I mean. Who could miss such a beauty? Those people, their gazes and voices. Horrible. And did you see the people? Everyone spoke and breathed as one spirit. It was... I simply adore the town's day. That's what you've been expecting to see again today, right? But I'm afraid it, it only happens once a year. Actually, today I was hoping to find a woman, but since you're mentioning last night, let me just ask you first. Father Imre had no idea into what kind of place Victoria was about to take me. This could be my only chance before leaving to get some details about the town for him. So? I'm, I'm listening. What's the meaning of the robe and the bells around its waist? The inhabitants of this town regard themselves as Kotar's disciples. And so, they dress like the Seven Ones. You saw the grotesques on that building? It's them. They are the sacred Seven Disciples of Eve on Kotar. But why was everyone dressed like that last night? What does it mean? The appearance of the robe strikes fear into evil beings, while the noises of the bells tortures them. At least that's what they believe. What about these masks you have here? The executioner masks? What about them? Last night, every single person was wearing one. Oh, because they're mandatory. Every inhabitant gets one the day they are born. Why? Because there are still people who believe these masks repel, ward off evil beings from one's soul. No one's allowed to take part in the ritual on the town's day without a mask and a robe. And no one's allowed not to take part because it glorifies the life of our patron saint. You believe a mask can protect you? A mask and a strong faith in God. That's what people truly believe for centuries already. Last night, you were the only person on the square without the ornaments. You didn't participate in the ritual? That's right. I never participate. It's too bizarre for me. Everyone respects that, so they allow me not to take part. Who are the evil beings you mentioned? I don't know. I guess anyone can be evil, right? But if they're really among us, then they are in hiding. The things I said could sound strange. I guess even scary for a stranger. But believe me, I have never felt or seen anything but love in Savati Gotar. I don't believe you. I needed just one night to feel and see quite the opposite. Wait a minute. How do you know I didn't wear any ornaments? I saw you talking to a woman. The one I said I was looking for earlier. All right. Can I help you with that? Did you see her today? Uh, who is she? I talked to a lot of people yesterday, and many didn't show their faces. She's scrawny, has short brown hair, and wears glasses, and she wore a coat. So, just like you, and not a local. Hmm. Wait, y you mean Victoria? I don't know. It could be. Did you see her? I did, yesterday. Why? What about today? You sure she didn't pass by? <coughs> I... I don't... I don't know. You know, as soon as no one's around, I, I tend to get lost in this book of mine. 
Now, but wait a minute. If Victoria passed by, I I'd know that. Believe me. She would have said hi, at least. I have a feeling she's lying. She's a good friend of mine. Like I said, a friend? They talked only for a half an hour last night. Why are you looking for her? I wanted to talk to her last night, but then she got lost in the crowd. Oh, but I still don't understand. Why do you want to talk to her? Do you know her? Maybe I do. I I'm not sure. I need to... <laughs> You should have someone take a look at you. I need to... <laughs> How do you breathe in this place? Why? I think it's the fog. It's like it's trying to grind my lungs to pieces. That's horrible and strange. But I guess it's a good thing you're just visiting then. The fog never leaves this valley. I was trying to say I need to find that woman and talk to her, and then I can leave this place forever. <laughs> it still bothers me. If you're just visiting, where have I seen you before? Maybe I should ask for directions. If Victoria is somewhere around here, I don't know where to look for her. Where could a stranger possibly go in this town? I thought you said you wanted to leave. Oh, sorry. You want to find Victoria? Well, I don't know. I, I guess you could. This is a small town, but very old, ancient. There are a lot of interesting places one might visit. If she's still here, and if she's sightseeing right now, then, then I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. Explore the town. Just stay away from the forest and the mountain. Why? For one thing, you won't find Victoria there, if she didn't ignore my advice. But also... Listen. Can you guess what it is? A hum of insects? Nocturnal insects, yes. Oh, you're the first person to answer correctly. Uh, how'd you know? Anyway, years back, after I started working in her little family shop, I heard this sound for the first time. And it never went away. It never stops. Not, not for a moment, day or night. Not that I'm complaining, really. It helps me block the outside world and stay positive. But it, isn't it weird? How's this sound related? Why should we stay away from the forest and the mountain? There's a decree in force. It forbids anyone to visit the forest of Carcassonne or the mountain of Utef. A decree? The proof of faith. Every person, no matter whether being a local or a visitor, must abide by its words or suffer the consequences. But if you ask me, I don't know the reason they're forbidden. I keep asking myself if the forest is really dead like they say it is then where's the sound coming from it's not a radio signal you must have it recorded on tape then no what what this radio doesn't even have a slot for that then it's a radio signal what else could it be Look behind you, in the far distance. Why should I? <laughs> Just trying to explain. If you focus your sight well enough, there behind the clouds of fog, you'll see a massive rock. That rock is just part of the insurmountable wall that surrounds this town. So you're trying to suggest it's not possible for the sound to be coming from a place beyond. I doubt that. At Zutaf, the mountain I mentioned before, it devours anything that tries to come our way. And this town doesn't have stations of any kind, because we're stuck in the past. So it can't be a local radio signal either. 
I'm convinced the source of this sound is located somewhere deep inside the forest. What makes you think that? I feel like I can trust you. You know, I often visit the forest to find these cheerful insects. So far, I haven't been able to locate any of them. And I haven't seen any animals there either. But if you ask me, Carcassa is far from being dead. It's just a different kind of energy, that's all. A different kind of energy? I don't know. But I've been there and nothing bad happened to me. So how do you explain that? Maybe it did, but she just doesn't know it yet. I should keep away from her. She's strange and didn't help me at all. Madam, I have to leave now. Already? I really have to go. Wait, you, you didn't tell me your name. Maybe it'll help me remember where have I seen you. Madam, who I am is irrelevant. I just want to be left alone. Excuse me. What should I do now? Maybe I should just follow Nikolai. Eventually he could... He should lead me to Victoria. Nikolai hasn't moved an inch. He's still standing in front of that handicapped man. Why is he doing that? A shadow has appeared. Again. How much longer do I have to wait? I'm close. The threshold is not that far away. This is taking an eternity. You should find a way to push him out of there. Wherever he is. Strange lamp. It has an unusually long hook. Maybe it has something to do with the light Moises trying to reach. <gasps> what happened? Where's the light? <laughs> What have you done? I apologize, but something had to be done to get you talking. You must. Why? I just quenched a flame. Actually, you just mangled a worm. <laughs> That wasn't a mere flame. And this is not just a lamp. That flame was already dying out. I just put an end to its misery. Misery? It didn't cease to shine since that fateful day. Not for a moment. And then you show up and decide it is time. What's so special about this lamp? You people wouldn't believe what I've seen and felt in that damned place. But I must not forget. I have to go down there each day and relive everything all over again. That flame saved my life that day and has kept my hope alive ever since. Hey, you still there? I just remembered. Come here, quickly. It is time for you to leave, Nicolay. No. Let him stay. I want to keep my word. You pathetic, crawling thing. What are you doing? He's part of the herd that left you rotting down there. He needs to learn the truth. Mostly about himself. You don't know anything about me. You're not a deacon, and you really need your pills for the pain. You don't need them to actually curb the fear. No, I don't. Now, tell me what do you want from me? You have to behead someone. Whoa. 
hell were you doing at that window? So you did see that woman today? What? You yelled you remembered. Do you remember that she was here today? Where did she go? Oh, no, it's, it's not that. I, I've already told you. I, I haven't seen her. I, I'm sorry. But no, I remember where the two of us met before. I should leave, madam. Wait. You, you said you've never been here before, I know. But you have. We've met in Carcassa way too many times to make me forget your face and voice. Like I said, I've never been in this town before. You did. You came to me in my dreams. The dreams I have always start the same way. I find myself in the woods, daring not to move. I've just seen something horrifying, but my mind refuses to tell me what it is. I, I tremble with fear and, and groan in despair. At this point, I either succeed to get out, or more often than not, I am staying trapped in the agony of my unconscious mind. Why are you telling me this? I dread to dream. And it's been like that for years now. But... But sometimes the agony is replaced by happiness. It happens when in the middle of the forest blackness, you appear, flying noisily towards me. Flying? You always approached me in the form of a moth. What? A strange moth, I'd say, with two faces. The one on the back side of the head looks just like a human skull, I guess. The moth is a symbol of wickedness. That couldn't be me. You're either lying or insane. Oh, no. I, I didn't say. I'm Brother Benedict. I, I don't understand the meaning of the skull, but you are not an evil appearance in my dream. You're a good being. I'm a servant of God, the Order of St. Paul, the first hermit. My fear and despair dissolve into joy and hope when you appear. You always help me get through the night. I can't stand it here anymore. Just a moment. Benedict? You, you said your name is Benedict. I didn't say my name. I, I heard it. You... I don't have anything more to say to you. You are victorious, brother. I am. Why haven't you said so before? Because I don't know you, and I don't trust you. You know, now I might have an idea. Where your sister is. So you were lying to me the whole time? I knew it. I didn't know who you were either, so I had to lie. I honestly haven't seen her today. But last night she seemed obsessed with the idea of going to the lake today. Why would she do that? Mere sightseeing. Which I found strange because she already knew there's nothing to see there. Maybe she just liked the view. How do I get there? Take a left from here, then just follow the path through the woods. It's a short walk. There's an old man selling fish. You can ask him if he saw her. His name's Arson, and since you're going to talk to him, could you do me a favor? To, to fetch something for me? Just tell him I sent you for Friday's meal. With everything going on yesterday, I completely forgot about it. Why would I do that? Why didn't you go earlier today? Why don't you go now? I can't leave the shop. I'm waiting for my father. He's gonna be here any time now. No promises, madam. It's just one fish. And if you do this for me, I'll show you my gratitude by giving you a brochure of the town. I don't need your gratitude. Like I mentioned before, as soon as I find Victoria, I'm gonna leave this place forever. 
No, you won't. The brochure contains a detailed map of the town and its surroundings. Uh, trust me, you'll find it useful. You'll see. Should I go to the lake? I don't trust her. I could just wait for Nikolai to come out. Oh, and one last thing. How was your visit to the Grimalda Castle? I've completely forgot about the exhibition. Victoria bought three masks from me, you know? Why? Because she had to. No one's allowed to enter the castle without a mask. I mean, why are you asking? We were dead tired and just didn't make it there. So you don't even know what happened? Come closer. Someone fell from the castle's roof into the nearby chasm. Why are you telling me this? I'm worried. I thought you were there. After this happened, no one was allowed to leave the castle for hours. It was a nightmare. People were shrieking and crying into the darkness of the halls and corridors. I already told you we didn't make it there. You know, there are places in this town you can't visit without a mask. Grimalda is one of them. I don't follow. It's one thing to visit and leave. It's another to stay trapped for hours in such a place. Then I thought... What? You thought what? Are you sure Victoria didn't go? Honestly, I'm not sure. She did not. Why? We missed the exhibition. Fell asleep the moment we arrived at the house. I just... I... I think I saw her alone on the square later. After you left. That's impossible. She didn't leave the house. And even if she did, that doesn't mean she went to the castle. Only one person had slept in that bed upstairs, and I don't think that was her. Did she give you the mask she bought from me? She didn't. But that doesn't mean she visited the castle. You know, some witnesses saw the fall, but... She's around here somewhere, and she'll take me out of this town soon. But it was so dark they couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman who fell. They must have found the body. Did they search for it? They only found parts. Badly disfigured, unidentifiable. So what are you telling me? Where do you think Victoria is? They... Also found the head. Didn't you just say the person was unidentifiable? The face is skinless. It was torn apart before the falls. They don't know the identity yet. Who would do such a horrible thing? Someone inhuman. This was devil worship and witchcraft at work. Witchcraft? How can you be so sure? The authorities believe that person was a woman. A scrawny woman, with short brown hair. Wait, it's a woman? What are you trying to tell me here? Who is she? And I'm sure it was devil worship and witchcraft because she wore a mask above her skinless face. But it wasn't an executioner's mask. No, it, it was. The yellow mask. We believe in you. You've come this far, to the end of St. Quatar, the Yellow Mask. But this is just a prologue of the story we want to tell. The beginning of a long and dark journey of change, full of twists and fateful choices. For us, the storytellers that gifted you this free prologue, your support is crucial. Help us to tell the story of St. Quatar. Support us on Kickstarter. We fear nothing. For you are with us.